CataractCoach.com. We've got a ruptured globe, corneal laceration, and a ruptured lens capsule. You see the collapsed anterior chamber. This patient needs our help. So the first step is we want a paracentesis incision. It's tough to make in this flat anterior chamber, this open globe, but it allows us access in order to fill the eye with viscoelastic. That's an important step here. So if you have trouble initially, change your path, do what you need to do, fixate the eye, but you need to get a reasonable paracentesis into the anterior chamber. We'll then fill the eye with our dispersive viscoelastic. Important here to avoid hitting the iris. Once we have the dispersive viscoelastic and we can see the extent of the laceration of the cornea. So step one is to close this laceration. Find the apex of the uh, laceration or find the center of it and pass a suture. Now we want at least a millimeter on either side of the laceration and this suture should be about 80 or 90% depth. You want to avoid having multiple passes of the suture and trying again and again and again because it'll just macerate and tear up the tissue. Remember, the central cornea is only 500 microns, very thin. So here's suturing up, there's the first suture going in. Now we've got three or four sutures coming and the eye's starting to look a lot better. Now let's talk about the pre-op history. What was the nature of the in injury? Was it an intraocular foreign body or not? Was it a clean injury? Metal, which is pretty clean, or plant matter or wood, which is a lot dirtier? What's the timing of the injury? When did this happen? On the pre-op exam, what's the visual acuity? What's the extent of the injury? The cornea, the lens? CT scan's important if you su suspect an intraocular foreign body. Are there other injuries? Globe, lid, orbit, face, brain? What's the status of the other eye? And hey, while you're in clinic, do the lens calcs of the other eye and do a full exam of the other eye. Very important. Set appropriate patient expectations. This patient's never gonna have normal vision. It'll never be as good as the other eye, never. Years for recovery, more surgery in the future. You could be totally blind, irreversibly. You're gonna lose the eye. You're gonna have sympathetic ophthalmia any time in the future. Heck, you have a higher chance of a ruptured globe because you've had this injury in this eye or even the other. And you need protective eyewear for life. So now we can see the cornea is sealed up. Time to make a scleral tunnel to remove the lens material. Now in a young person, we can remove the lens material just with two paracentesis incisions, doing a bimanual INA. The lens is soft, just aspirate it. But an older person, there may have some nuclear component to the lens, and you may need to use the phaco probe. So don't make a corneal incision. Leave the poor cornea alone, it's had enough trauma. Make a scleral tunnel. Good job here by this resident. What's the consent for the surgery? Close the globe, lensectomy, possible implant, IOL, CTR, sutures, possible vitrectomy. What are the risks? Severe permanent vision loss, need for more surgery, ugly cosmetic deformity, limited visual recovery, sympathetic, oph sympathetic ophthalmia, chronic pain, irritation. These are all risks that are very real. Interop, we want to do general anesthesia. Look at that leak from the central cornea. Stop, you gotta stop right now, put a suture in. You gotta close that central cornea. You can't operate with such terrible fluidic. So go back inside the eye. Take pics of the eye in the pre-op period. Very important. The surgeon may wanna do the prep instead of the nurse. When you're doing the pre-op exam after anesthesia is induced under general, place a patient ID sticker on the eye as you take pictures. Easy to identify the eye and the patient. There's the eye well three-piece lens being placed in the sulcus, that IOL serves a very important role. Now, the classic teaching is to leave the eye aphaky, but in a clean injury like this, there's a benefit in placing the IOL. Support for the remaining capsule, it can plug a hole in the posterior capsule, a barrier effect, help keep the vitreous in the posterior segment. Very important. So now, you revise some sutures here, place a few more, whatever it takes, get this eye closed. At the end of the case, you're going to remove the, the, BS, the OVD from the eye, fill the AC with BSS, suture, suture all the incisions. Of course, do what you're seeing here. Seidel test. Make sure everything looks good. You may also want to do a specimen for culture at the beginning of the case. Make sure there's no infection. Seidel test looks great. Now, you also may want to consider doing a retrobulbar block of marcaine. Keep the patient happy in the post-op period. Subconj or intracameral antibiotics, patch and shield the eye. And on post-op day one, temper expectations. Don't ask the patient to read the Snell chart. Be patient, give it time. We can do more surgery in the future. 
will help this patient. But first of all, let's close that globe. Thanks for watching. We just covered a lot of material in that video. So let's go over it a little more slowly to make sure you fully understand. So for these ruptured globe cases, look at the pre-op. What's the history, the nature of the injury? Is there a possibility of an intraocular foreign body? Was a clean injury, metal versus plant matter or wood? Metal is relatively clean. Plant matter wood is much dirtier. Timing of the injury, when did this happen? What were the circumstances? Describe to me what you were doing when this happened. Your physical exam of the patient, of course, what's the visual acuity, the extent of the injury, the cornea, the lens? Do a CT scan if you suspect an intraocular foreign body. Are there other injuries to the globe, lids, orbit, face, brain? What's the status of the other eye? The other eye deserves a full dilated exam. How do you know there's not trauma to both eyes? There could be an intraocular foreign body mostly in one eye and a small one in the other eye. Do lens calculations of the other eye in case you need to place an eye well. You can use the other eye's lens calcs and then add a diopter because we want this patient to end up myopic. Set appropriate patient expectations. This eye will never have normal vision. It will never be as good as the other eye. It will require years for recovery, more surgery in the future. The eye could be totally blind, irreversibly. The patient could conceivably lose the eye. You can get sympathetic ophthalmia in this eye or the other eye. There's a higher future chance of a ruptured globe in the same or other eye. And you need protective eyewear for life. Let's talk about the consent for surgery. This consent is very important. This is what's really important to protect you and give the patient a realistic mindset. You want to first close the globe. That's number one. In this case, suture the corneal laceration. Two, lensectomy. Three, possible implants. IOL, CTR, sutures, possible vitrectomy even. What are the risks? Severe permanent vision loss. Need for more surgery. Ugly cosmetic deformity. The patient could have a really ugly outcome. And they have to be prepared for that. Limited visual recovery. Sympathetic ophthalmia, chronic pain, irritation, loss of the eye. These are all important things in the pre-op period. Interoperative. You know, general anesthesia is typically preferred. Take pictures of the eye pre-op, including with the patient ID and name sticker near the eye. The surgeon may want to prep the eye instead of the nurse because it's an open globe. And you don't want the nurse to push on the, the globe itself and Extrude intraocular contents. Give an accurate time answer to the anesthesiologist. This case should take only one hour. Make sure the draping is good and all eyelashes are sequestered. Video record the surgery. Ensure good focus and white balance. Let's talk about steps of surgery. Take a sample for culture. Careful paracentesis with a soft eye that's flat with a very minimal anterior chamber. Fill the AC with your viscoelastic dispersor will stay in place better. Don't make the AC too deep, just barely physiologic. Identify the extent of the corneal laceration. Find the center or peak. Suture the peak first, at least a millimeter from each side of the laceration, 80 plus percent depth. For the cornea, 10 or nylon is preferred. When you throw the sutures, that second knot, the second throw should be nine degrees away so you can adjust the tension. In this video, the resident did not do that. That's a mistake. Because you're going to need to place multiple sutures in a row in the cornea, and you want them all to have the same tension. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go to cataractcoach.com and look up how to suture. There's great videos there. Once the cornea is closed with sutures, check for a reasonable level of water tightness. For the lensectomy, a young patient's a soft lens. You can use two paracentesis, do a bimanual IA. An older patient, you may need to make a fake incision. Again, make it in the sclera, a scleral tunnel. Do not make further incisions in the cornea. Tripan blue dye will help stay in the capsule. You may need to evacuate the viscoelastic first to help the dye stick. Determine the extent of the anterior lens capsule rupture. Placing an IOL is optional. Classic teaching is to leave aphagic due to infection risk. But a more modern thought process is there's a benefit to placing an IOL. 
support for the remaining capsule, plug a hole in the poster capsule, the barrier effect, keep the vitreous back where it belongs to prevent it prolapsing into the anterior segment. The eye well is not for refractive purposes because the central corneal scar is going to limit the vision to count fingers at best. Three-piece eye well is preferred since there are more placement options available and more stability. Remove the viscoelastic, fill the anterior chamber with BSS, suture the scleral phaco incision, suture the conge, side out test everything with fluorescein to ensure 100% watertight at physiologic IOP. Rethrow any sutures as needed, bury all knots, Consider a retrobulb injection of a small amount of marcaine or bupivacaine for some long-acting local anesthesia. Subconj or intracamel antibiotics, patch and shield overnight. And then let's talk about post-op day one. Temper patient expectations. Do not ask the patient to read the Snellen chart. Hand motion vision on post-op day one is okay. At a slump, look at the AC depth first. Look at the corneal laceration. Is there any leakage? Is the AC flat? Now carefully Seidel test with fluorescein. If no leaks, then perhaps check the pressure with a tono pen. Post-op regimen, steroids and antibiotics for sure. Prednisolone acetate at a minimum four times a day, probably better off eight times a day. Antibiotics four times a day as well, probably a later generation fluoroquinolone. Optimals NSAIDs. Keep in mind, they can slow down corneal healing. And cycloplegics may help with some uh, pain relief. Look at the posterior segment via the indirect ophthalmoscope. Won't be the best view, but you need to make sure that you have a view back there. Close follow-up care for the first few months, and the patient needs continued follow-up for life. In the future, give the cornea at least 6 to 12 months to heal before removing sutures. Wait for topographic stability with monthly follow-up after suture removal. Possible topo-guided eczema ablation, hopefully the patient is myopic, and the patient may need a full-thickness corneal transplant in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I trust that you learned a lot and that you will take great care of the next patient you see with this kind of traumatic injury.